Hello there. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to calculate and interpret process capability ratio, or CP, and the process capability index, or CPK. This question corresponds to problem S6.29 in your text. Here's our data. We have the specifications for a plastic liner for a concrete highway project that calls for a thickness of three millimeters plus or minus one millimeter. We know the standard deviation of the process is estimated to be 0.02 millimeters. So we're asked what the upper and lower specification limits for the product are. Well, we can do that pretty easily. You can see the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit are equal to 3.0 millimeters plus or minus 0.1 millimeter. So that leaves us with an upper specification limit of 3.1 millimeters and a lower specification of 2.9 millimeters. We're then told that the process is known to operate at a mean thickness of 3.0 millimeters. And so what's the CPK for the process? Now we know what the standard deviation is, 0.02. Also told that the standard deviation is 0.02. And now we're told that X bar is equal to 3.0 millimeters. We're asked to calculate the CPK, but we might as well calculate the CP as well. So the CP is equal to the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit divided by six standard deviations. So 3.1 minus 2.9 divided by six times 0 0.02, that gives you 1.67. So we have process capability ratio or CP of 1.67. We then know that the CPK is equal to the minimum of the upper specification limit minus X bar over three sigma or X bar minus the lower specification limit over three sigma. The upper spec is 3.1 and the mean is 3.0 over three times 0 0.02. And the lower spec is 3.0 minus 2.9 over three times 0 0.02. And the answer for both of these happens to be 1.67. So what this tells us is that we have a nice, very capable, in fact, more than capable process because we have a CP of 1.67 means it's more than capable of producing within specifications. And it's producing nicely around the mean and does not favoring either the upper or lower specification. So if we were to kind of visualize what this looks like, we have a mean of three millimeters and the upper specification is 3.1 and the lower specification is 2.9. So if you look at the upper specification limit first of 3.1, which is plus 0 0.1 from the mean. And if we divide that by the standard deviation, that means that the upper specification is about five standard deviations is about here. And that means the lower specification would be about here. So this is what our base looks like. So with a CP of 1.67 and a CPK of 1.67, our curve will look something like this. If we had a CP and a CPK of 1.0, then it would look something like this where in essence, the tails of the curve touch the, uh, the upper and lower specifications. But in our case, our process is more capable than that. And because we are between plus five and minus five standard deviations, this is very close to six sigma quality and six sigma is six standard deviations on each side. So in terms of the percentage of all the units that meet specifications, a very, very high proportion of the products will meet specifications close to 100% of all units will meet specs with a very small defect ratio. It won't be as good as six sigma quality because six sigma is 2.7 defects per million. So this would be pretty close to that, but is very, very small. And there you go, CP and CPK.